I'm going to attempt to sell a $1 million art sculpture using only Facebook and Instagram ads. Your inability to advertise is costing you a fortune. If you want to see if I can pull it off, stay tuned. Hey, hey, any restaurant owners out there? Any restaurant owners or people who know restaurant owners? Listen, as much as the cons in the concept of the show within it, I, I want to go up to businesses and, and um, hopefully who would listen or, you know, sometimes maybe arrange it beforehand, but just basically drop by, see if I can speak to the owner and manager and, uh, and give him some nuggets and knowledge and based if they actually provide me with, uh, with you know, answers to some questions, give them, give them some uh, actionable advice how to run uh, ads on social media, paid ads, right? As much as I want to do that and help restaurant owners oftentimes or any other business owners, I just can't. You know why? Because they go out of business like this place, okay? This place is a giant place. My girlfriend worked there for a little bit, so I knew that, that they need help, right? So check this out. This is what happened. Um, they've been around for a long time. What's the name of the place? Bogies Grill and Tap. I think I just managed even to tag them. You can see there's like 1,800 check-ins, right? So once again, business owners who just refuse to either adapt with the times or are just so stubborn and think that if they know the business itself, they don't need to do marketing, right? Or that they're gonna figure it out themselves. Well, guess what? This place wasn't full at all times. You know, as I said, I'll stop by, I'll go to businesses that need help that I see empty, and if it's empty or it doesn't have enough people, then you probably need some help. Well, this place can't get any help no more. I offered them, I told them, listen, sometimes you're full, great. You have an affluent crowd, even better. People can afford to pay. But, you know, since my girl worked there, I knew that they have empty days, I knew which days, and I was like, listen, you could run a campaign, right? So any, uh, any uh, of you, if you own a restaurant, listen up right now. I think, you know what, for this, I should bring on a friend. Let's see if he's watching while I drop some nuggets. He might have even more bombs. Matt, you should, if I can catch you on this, you should drop by. But listen, um, if you're watching. So if you have a restaurant, right, a local restaurant, even if it's small or big, doesn't matter what kind of food they have you can run multiple different yeah I got gloves this time huh uh, you can run different kind uh, kinds of campaigns one of them a popular one is where people you you put out uh, like a valuable meal right uh, so somebody's trying to get out hold on whoops I'm trying to make it so it doesn't freeze on me uh, who's trying to get on no, I'm trying to get, trying to get somebody else on. Uh, anyway, people are trying to get get into my live feed. Uh, so if you have a restaurant, right? One thing this, uh, that you can do is you can have a campaign that offers, let's say, a valuable meal like this one for two, right? And you're like, hey, a hundred, hundred fifty dollar value meal for two, or a romantic dinner for Valentine's Day, and you run it uh, several weeks or up to a month before Valentine's Day, and you just all you ask is people for people to enter their email, right? Once they they enter their email. They don't see any other distractions. There's no general page for your, for your, uh, I'm trying to cancel this. Sorry guys. Uh, there's no general page, uh, for the restaurant, uh, uh, where they go and they see the options and menu. No, it's a specific offer run towards the local crowd. And if it's a specific crowd locally that goes, then you run it towards them, be it men, women, or maybe of specific income demographics, then you run it towards them. Okay. So you can run a campaign like that. They see the free offer that they can win. Potentially you can even announce it. Oh, hey, on Facebook live in our restaurant on this date on February, you know, 10 before Valentine's day, we're going to announce the winner. So submit your email and see if you win. So once they submit the, their email on the next landing page, which a landing page for those of you who don't know, is just a simple page, very light, loads quickly, but usually with a specific offer, sometimes multiple, but usually made just for one 
offer, okay? Matt, I see you. I'm going to bring you on in a second because this guy is actually, uh, he kills it with restaurants, okay? Matt, so wait up. Uh, so here's, here's the thing. You know what? Let's actually go by. So that's the one thing, right? So they submit their email and the next offer they see is, hey, usually this or that, some other offer or maybe the same dish costs 150 You might win, but why don't you get it 50% off right now if you buy it now and you have a timer. It's legit. You don't want to be using fake scarcity. So they're like, hey, well, actually, we're giving away 20 coupons this month for people if they buy now. Look at this. Let me finish this before I show you. This is funny. So they see an incentive to act now and purchase something that's 50% off usually because think about it. A lot of business owners just like them are so stubborn. I'm like, no, we don't want those people who are looking for freebies and shit. Well, listen, you don't need to focus on those who are going to just go for the freebie and hope to win. You focus on those who are going to end up being your customers. So once they enter their email and they see the next landing page, boom, there's a spe uh, specific offer. So most likely, if you, you were already targeting the right crowd and not everybody, let's say, as I said, it's, let's say it's, it was um, people, I think in, in this place it was like mostly people 40 and up who make actually uh, a, good, a, a good income. So let's say you can target people uh, 50 or 75,000 uh, a year and up who make that kind of money because uh, they come and they spend money here. But even those people like some freebies and want to win, but they have the money. So if you were targeting that campaign towards people who were already be capable of buying your product or service, right? Like in this case, you could then offer them something else on the next page. It's just a yes or no, yes or no, instead of getting lost in, a, in your menu, in your general page. You understand? So check this out. Okay, check this out. Uh, you're gonna see it in reverse, right? But it says, <laughs> it is sad for us to say that Bogey's Grill and Tap Room has closed. We really appreciate that we're so stubborn. No, I'm kidding. We really appreciate uh, we're, we're so stubborn to uh, implementing new marketing techniques. Now, it says, we really appreciate your pa patronage. So I can't say it right. Uh, through all the past years, I look forward to seeing you all down the road. Where are you going to see us? Where? Thanks again, Jim, John, and Kevin. Well, listen, Jim, John, and Kevin. Unfortunately, you guys didn't adapt. Okay? It's a tough game. Adapt or die. Okay? So listen, another campaign you could run is instead of a free uh, whatever win uh, type of dinner campaign you could run a campaign that is uh, uh, that is offering again something specific for example kids eat free right or a free appetizer and people see that and you target already the audience that's used to coming because if you've been in business for at least a year you know who your customers are and you target specifically on Facebook or on YouTube people who you know is your demographic oh, oh as simple as that you know what let me bring on matt he knows a lot about this matt hey, hey what's up hey it's so it's brutal out here you know dude it's terrible i mean it's like i think it's like 65 in here I mean, you can see how the, the <laughs> weather is like michael is just stuck in the air up there so yeah i don't even know if that previous video will save on my live or not but just to brief you guys again you know I was passing by a restaurant and as I said I wanted to stop by places that uh, I could help and give them a marketing strategy actionable advice how to uh, how to bring more business because these guys didn't have business every day they had been days when they were full and days when they were super empty and this this place is out of business is it sad for us to say that our grill and tap room has closed so basically that's a little recap yeah. I passed by my girl used to work here boom giant place i don't know square footage i'm still not used to square feet but in uh square meters you would be <laughs> just as giant <laughs> but matt listen am i right or, or, or am i just bullshitting people tell them you've been working with restaurants for so long breweries tell them what's the deal are they just as stubborn as these people oftentimes well i don't know if it's that they're that they're stubborn necessarily is as much as restaurants tend to have a lot of people that get into the business that aren't business owners. And I see this in another industry, the fitness industry. There's a lot of gym, gyms that are owned by people that were 
power lifters and trainers and they're great at that but they don't actually know how to run their business so yeah with restaurants i do see that where you know i, I have a restaurant this past summer that we grew their list by five thousand people in under two three months for under a thousand dollars in facebook ad spend and the guy said what what's the big deal i said what do you mean well as you have five thousand more people you can invite to your restaurant and ask them to come, <laughs> come come eat here come do business with me and he didn't understand the value of that and a lot of times that's what people aren't used to they're used to buying advertising here's my check here's my credit card and something's going to be on the air and i don't know if it's going to work or not and when it comes down to the fact that it's about building your own radio station it's about you've got that brick and mortar how can you build an audience? I give you a great example. I had a campaign I launched this morning at 9 a.m. for a two-location restaurant in New Orleans. Within three hours, we had over 200 people that had opted in through Facebook Messenger and through email. And so now, <laughs> in under a couple hours, that restaurant has 200 more people that he can say next week, two weeks, three weeks, hey, here's where I'm at. Here's why you should come do business with me, and I look forward to seeing you. That's where a lot of businesses fail. They don't understand the value. They always think that advertising people are there to sell them something. And they don't want to sit there and look and realize, that, you know what? Maybe I don't have the answers. Maybe I need to look outside of my, my expertise. And I'll give you an amazing example. A guy that you and I both know, Rob Bailey, does marketing just like us. He's trained just like us. I hired him two weeks ago to help the gym I'm a business owner in. So I can do what he does. But I saw that he did something a little better than me, a little more unique, especially to the fitness world. So we wrote him a check to do what I do for a living, and it's worked. That's crazy. And what would you say? Have you seen so some restaurants, they feel like they're going to, just like other businesses, they feel like, okay, well, maybe we'll plow through, right? Maybe like we're losing money, so we can't put more money in advertising, God forbid, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to write it write it out but what about so let's say some places have empty days or it's let's say half a day is always empty they want to fill it up more and the other part of the day is busier you ever run campaigns for us where it's a specific time of the day yep. uh, or like uh, geared towards filling uh, up that section of the day Matt froze up a little bit you still there and if people are watching, give me some likes. <laughs> Happy New Year, says Giannis. Matt, I lost you for a little bit. To you, Matt, is uh, about more specific types of campaigns. Oh, lost Matt, but maybe I can bring you back. I'm still live, right? Give me some likes, guys. Give me some comments so I see. Make sure that I'm still... Okay, I'm on. I'm on. Matt, come back on. So, uh, so that's the thing. See? Matt does a lot of campaigns for restaurants. Oh, I'm back. All right, there you are. Let me see how I can bring you. Uh, like, there you go. Inviting Matt back, right? I know Matt Platt. <laughs> hey, I'm back. I guess somebody tried right. somebody. Yeah, so your, your question was running campaign specific times. Yeah, we've done that many times, whether it's a Sunday, whether it's a Monday. If you look at the restaurant business in particular, the hottest days are Thursday and Friday for lunch because everybody goes out from the office and then Thursday through Saturday night. But I can promise you there's a lot of restaurants out there that have nobody sitting in there at 5 o'clock on a Sunday. You, you, yeah. you still have your mortgage. You still have your electric bill. You still have your water bill. You've got 10 to 15 employees on staff that you can't cut because you might have a dinner push. Do something different. I tell you what blew me away why it didn't it didn't work a while back was Groupon had a program they were working on they tested in Seattle that they never got live for some reason nation, nationwide it was a Groupon Now where it was meant to be where businesses can have access and they can log in and turn an offer on now hey this is good right now and when it when they turned it off it was done <clears throat> and I think that's a huge thing that a lot of restaurants aren't doing enough of I've got a client of mine that owns some Dairy Queens in Texas that we're working with. And they have a uh, local person in one of their locations that consistently pops on there and says, hey, buy one, get one free blizzards in the next three hours because they know it's going to be dead. So yeah. why not drive some revenue here? Somebody that does a good job of that, that doesn't do it marketing-wise instantly, but they do it pretty consistently is Olive Garden. They have a consistent message for the seniors, uh, the 55-plus crowd to come in like 4 to 6 to 6 o'clock. 
And I, I believe they used to have a special menu for that. So it's capacity. You know, we've the gym that I'm a partner in, I was talking to Casey, my partner, the other day, and I said, look, I was here on a Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. There's 11,000 square feet. There are three people here. Yeah. What can we do to get 20 people in here for free? Let them see the facility. Let them see what we're all about. And that's what businesses have to be willing to do. I told our one train at Crystal the other day, I said, you know what? Monday's at 3 o'clock. This isn't a packed house. Why don't you go to every school in the area? There's probably a 1,000 teachers within five miles of here. And every Monday at 3 o'clock is a free teacher's class. Do something. Do something. Step out of your comfort zone. And you mentioned earlier, people look at advertising like an expense because they're used to seeing it on the on the profit loss sheet. It's not an expense. It's an investment. Because if you spend your money correctly and you gain assets, hey, Billy's watching. What up, Billy? There's our man. So if you spend your money correctly, you gain assets. And what I mean assets that, like this video, you can retarget people that watch this video. So there's an asset. You now have an audience you can reach in the future, an email address, a Facebook Messenger subscriber, a text opt-in. Those are people you can reach out. That's not an expense. You know, that's what drives me crazy. But I, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that a lot of people get it. It's easy in America to open a business. And so a lot of people get into business that shouldn't be in business, and they don't want to listen to people that they shouldn't. And, yeah, and a lot, they have to realize, and if any of you business owners I and mean, restaurant owners and bar owners are watching, you know, there's – it's measurable ROI that you can pull out each month. Like, you see – and you know, of course, what your lifetime value maybe of the customer is, but also, but pretty much after the first month or two, right? You already know it's like it gets predictable. You can scale it. Like on average, what what would you say? You know, either you know your clients or even other our friends' clients doesn't matter. But like for any restaurant owners, like the average ROI. I mean, of course, you have to dial in campaign. Sometimes the same campaign will, uh, of course, oftentimes will will work differently in uh, one town than other but you know what are the average ROIs in the lower on the high end that you've seen in restaurants uh, get from like yeah. Facebook ads or YouTube ads? On a low end, three and a half, four to one. On a high end, thirty to one. I had a client uh, that we worked with last year that in a four month period on a sixteen thousand dollar spend gained $103,000 in trackable sales. They came in 100% because of the program. They redeemed an offer in the restaurant, spent $103,000, and they grew their list by 9,400 new contacts. So they had almost 10,000 new people they could talk to. So when you look at that, just from a 16,000 to 100,000, I'm not a mathematician, but they're six or seven or eight to one. When you take into effect <laughs> almost 10,000 people they can invite back next month, if they do a terrible job with their marketing, and do bad emails and bad social media, if you can't get 10% of 10,000 people back next month, you might want to switch businesses. You might not have a good product, but it's not difficult. I mean, it just comes down to understanding and investing. I told a guy one time, I'll never forget his name, John. I won't say his name, I guess, on here, because it might be a Facebook friend of somebody I know. But he owned a window company in Cincinnati, and he told me, oh, I'm not doing any advertising. I was like 23, 24, so a long time ago. And I said, well, do me a favor, do you have a toolbox? But yeah, why? I said, I need a screwdriver. What do you need? I'm taking your sign now. What do you mean? I said, that's advertising, John. You're going to tell me you're not doing advertising. Well, take the damn sign off the wall then. And you also didn't buy that sign to think if it worked this month and take it down. And that's what drives me crazy with marketing. Let me try it for a month or two. Did you sign a one-month lease? I mean, we, when we leased our new gym, we leased it for five years with an option for five more. So I'm not going to go to my sign guy. You know what? I need a sign up here, which I need to get a new sign, but I need a sign up here for a month. And if I get a member off of it, I'll go ahead and buy your sign next month. It, that doesn't work that way, but businesses have this ingrained, I'm going to try something. And that's where they mess up with advertising is that you got to find something. And if I've got a program that got you two or 3,000 emails and messenger opt-ins and text messages and video views, and trackable, measurable assets that you gain, man, keep doing it. Keep going hard at it. Don't put it down. Yeah. See, guys, I know Matt Platt, so <laughs> I know it's real. He's been delivering. I mean, it's not always such a huge home run, but, it, I mean, come on, 100K minus 16K, do the math. That's a huge ROI. But even if you're doubling your money the first couple of months, yeah. isn't it worth it? Even if you, I mean, 
us marketers like me and Matt, when we launch new campaigns, first, we're like, hey, let me just even break even, right? Let me learn from the data. Let me spend a hundred, five hundred bucks, seven hundred fifty bucks, what the limit, let's say, for my one of the ad accounts is, and let me learn from that data so next month I can scale it up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that, that's what I. Uh, I did a video. If you saw it, uh, I'll I'll tag it on this afterwards. A link to it. But I did a video on reading ROI on a spreadsheet. I had it laid out because a client was pointing this out to me, and we changed it up. Him and I did. And I took the the spreadsheet. And I said, okay, month one, you're going to spend two thousand dollars with our company, and we're going to see about three to four thousand dollars in sales directly from that. Month two. You've now got 600 new people to talk to. And guess what you spend to get them your, their attention? Zero. You already acquired them. Month three, zero. Yeah. Month four, zero. So I told I said, look at this. If you do this every month, if we gain 600 contacts with your business, like we consistently do for our clients, if we get 600 new contacts a month, in 10 months, you've got 6,000 people on your books that you can invite back. And you don't have to spend a penny because you've already got their data. Send them a Facebook message. Send them a uh, an email. Send them a text. But you think about it. Ten months, six hundred people. That's six thousand people. If you can't put together a compelling offer to get ten to twenty percent of those people to come do business with your restaurant, do the math. That's six hundred people. Six hundred people at forty bucks a pop. I think that's twenty four thousand dollars. I mean, that's public school math. I cheated a lot. Pam's watching. She can attest. I did cheat probably in high school in math. So that might not be right. But that's 24 grand in business from acquiring people month two, month three, four, five months ago. That's where businesses mess up. They want to look at right now. And I tell you what, the business that do the best aren't looking at right now. They're looking at next year. Like I just did projections for 2019 and I, where I'm going to end the end of 2019. I'm not doing it for next month. I know what next month's going to be. You know what? Yeah, I might spend five or 10 grand this month on something that's not going to work, but I'm going to keep grinding and make things that work long term. Exactly. So, guys, unless you are allergic to money, you better take some advice. Uh, well, I don't want to toot my own horn, right? But from guys like us, and at least make sure that if it, it, don't give it to your, you know, I know I love my daughter too, but if your daughter is doing your marketing and she's never done it, <laughs> and you're like, oh damn, we just spent five hundred bucks, you, you know, you know those stories, man. Oh yeah. Like, no, no, my nephew is doing it or whatever. I mean, it's cool if your nephew knows what he's doing or she, but if they don't. Listen, why don't you have them train along while you're learning from the data when somebody's delivering your results? So to round this up, I really, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I hope anyone who is watching this, you know, doesn't find themselves in their business in a position like these guys. Okay? Look at this. I think it used to be a giant barn or a, or a factory. Matt, you see the size of this? Can you yeah. understand the scope? Yeah, it's, it's a good size restaurant for that, that size of a building. It's it's a big building. So guys, don't go out of business. Okay. Adapt or die. All right. So seek out guys like Matt, like me or anyone. If you have somebody you've already been following or trust, do that. Okay. You've got to adapt and maybe you've got to adapt quickly. I don't know what your case is. Okay. But uh, things in online marketing are changing quick, but the good side of it is it's, changing constantly for the better oh, yeah. the tools that are at our, at our disposal are amazing it's what a time to be alive it's the best and time man <laughs> the roads are paved with gold all right man well thanks for jumping on on this uh spontaneously and uh all of you watching uh check uh, check out matt's work matt flap tag you and uh, any of you who want actionable advice and work on your campaigns and videos and your stories and and especially if you can put a story imagine if these guys had a story right they put a uh, well-crafted story you made and how their business came about to be because it's a family-run business and put that into an ad campaign like I, I have other business owners do now right help them with their story make a video ad out of that run it across town around a few mile radius and, or some people will recognize you and they're like oh i didn't know they went through that oh my god this and that they can relate to you more and then retarget them with an offer and then see how many more people come come through you know All right? you know and if you want more of stuff like that check out the laptop warrior group the link should be somewhere below and uh matt thanks for dropping by maybe i'm gonna have matt sometimes 
visit uh, us inside of the group too. Cool. All right. See you next. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.